Hello, you know, there's, um, there's a revolution taking place in the design of our learning spaces around the world. Uh, I, I think it grew out of the work we did in the 80s and particularly the 90s, building virtual spaces which turned out to be 365, 24-7, collaborative, project-based, just open, exhilarating spaces. And I think a lot of that is now being drawn into our physical design. And people are inquiring, people are researching, people are reflecting on how that design might be different in the 21st century to the last and previous centuries. This is um, New Line Academy in Kent where they're, they're going to get a new school but in preparation they've thought to themselves, hmm, let's build a big space, let's take out a couple of walls between three classrooms and build an enormous space and reflect on how that might be better and different for teaching and you can see they've, they've reflected on new furniture, new pedagogies, new forms of organisation, working out just what works and what doesn't work, and they're building several iterations of that before they get to their new school. But this is a, this is a stunning and seductive learning space. And then um, in higher education, we're being really quite brave too, up in, uh, up in Glasgow, the Saltire Centre. They have these remarkable uh, inflatable spaces, which are now standard items in a educational computer company's catalogue. You can just buy these and when you want a little bit of privacy, you just blow up a quiet space around yourself. This is fundamentally about agility. It's about building spaces that are agile in the way that a theatre is agile, that can be dressed for a performance. And the performance is this year's learning, and this term's learning, this moment of learning. This is not about flexibility. Flexibility is a horrid word. If you talk about flexibility in design terms, you get those ghastly folding partitions that hotels are cursed with. This is about the ability to be agile and to, and to reconfigure and configure and configure again the space of learning for, for, for now's learning, for the learning that's happening at this moment. It's also about um, community, collegiality, about fundamentally usness, the ability to be part of something. Higher education above all else offers that sense of belonging. I mean, clearly, it's not about content. You know, this is not, if it was about content, we just have great libraries and, and nobody, would, nobody would do very, very much. Content might have been king in the last century, but sure as heck it isn't now. But I think community may just be sovereign. And uh, once you get your head around the fact that people are moving less, that there's more focus, there's more time for reflection, there are much longer blocks of learning, much less limits on learning, then the money we wasted on moving people around on efficient corridors and you know safe stairwells just you just it all goes out of the window and the the 20 25 percent of the money we wasted in higher education on efficient moving of people becomes part of the design instead here's um his Heller up school in Copenhagen, where they in Denmark, where they said to themselves, "Look, if the students are moving a lot less, the stairwells can become something else. They can become these lovely, big lecture theatre spaces, these places for focus and for and for community and for usness. You know, so when everybody gets drawn together, you get that lovely sense of together that's so important as part of higher education. And here in the in the Caribbean, uh, you can see." Uh, of course, it's the Caribbean all built around a, a cricket pitch. These are schools I'm working on um, delightfully. But you, you see these little little clusters around the, uh, the, the cricket pitch of little groups of 125 paired with another 125 next door. And that little, little intimate family, really, of 250 you really don't see much of the rest of the school at all. There are some shared um, specialist spaces, but that's their learning scale. That, that usness, that community, comes out of that small scale um, family learning model and it's very powerful, very powerful indeed. Playfulness as well I think is um, absolutely a key word really. The, the most precious thing in the 21st century surely is attention. And if it isn't content and it's not uh, you know, what is it? It's attention. You know, we know that if you can get attention from celebrity, from if you get attention from dancing badly, you remember John Sargent's wonderful uh, wonderful television piece. You know, if you can get attention, you've got something of value. And having the attention of our learners is so, so, so important, especially when they're out there, you know, trying to hold down a 35-hour-a-week job at £5 an hour to pay back their, um, their tuition fees. You know, we need their attention here in higher education now. Uh, it's not just something they pass through. And a lot of that's about playfulness. This is uh, in Limerick University in 
you can see they've got this wonderful uh, model of one of Leonardo's early flying machines. Leonardo's models, none of them worked. They all had some fatal physics flaw in, in each of them. They were quite interesting in their own right. But here, by hanging it on the ceiling between the Faculty of Arts and the Faculty of Science, you know, it does what Leonardo did. It brings those two um, great bodies of work together in a lovely and rather playful way. And here in, um, in, in Hellerup, in Copenhagen again, uh, you know, they have this uh, extraordinary need to, to bring children onto the campus at night because the campus was quiet and deserted and vandalism was a real issue. Suddenly, they say to themselves, hey, if we build a skateboard park and a cycle park all around the, all around the university, all around the, um, the school, you'd wish this was a university. <laughs> uh, then people will be drawn in there for, for play. And uh, play, for me, is a really important part of learning at every level. Can't begin to see why higher education buildings can't be more playful. They're full of ingenuity. They're full of imagination. They're full of humor. Why shouldn't the architecture be playful? Well, it can. It doesn't have to look like an office. It doesn't have to look like, you know, the worst case scenario of a, of a higher education building is they, they take the room allocation chart, they look at the cells on the spreadsheet, they build the cells as rooms, the architects are bored to tears and so they say to themselves, hmm, uh, that's a very boring building, let's put a grand atrium on the front and the sponsor says, I'd quite like my name over the door, so you have a grand entrance, an atrium and then a bunch of egg boxes. Yes. Absolute catastrophe. I can't begin to see how that's going to seduce learners into the level of scholarship and mutuality and collegiality we need in, in higher education. And I don't see why we need to focus so much on scale. I mean, it's very clear that in the 21st century, economies of scale through geographical location are unnecessary. You know, we can bring people together and give them a sense of belonging without geographical proximity at all. Look how seductive Facebook is. People aren't together, but they sure as heck feel part of something. And in many cases, they're learning together and moving forward. So I don't know what the lower limits are for scale in higher education. This is a school, I'm chairman of governors of this, um, Stepping Stones in Surrey, a wonderful, wonderful school. But it was built and opened with only four students. This is where they learn. Little tiny place. But it works because they're joined up with other schools and other communities and other learning opportunities is all around the world. So I don't know what the lower limit for size is in higher education. Maybe it's something as tiny as the little colleges that are popping up in places like Fremantle because they're just delightful places to be. But I do know that it isn't the size that we're building. You know, huge scale learning is not seductive, it's not collegiate, it's not commensurate with the levels of scholarly discourse that we know is at the heart of higher education. And if our students are going to work together, uh, whatever the scale of the of the organisation, we need furniture that reflects that. This is um, um, St Aloysius College in um, in Tasmania, in Hobart in Tasmania, and you can see that they've said to themselves, we can't build collaborative, gregarious, delightful learning with kitchen chairs. You know, if you say to a group of students, bring in a piece of furniture from home or from your digs that you think will improve your learning, not one of them will bring in a hard kitchen chair. You know, they'll bring in comfortable chairs, they'll bring in chairs where they can work with others. This is furniture designed for collaboration, designed for mutuality, designed for comfort, designed to make learning just like, just like home in terms of its comfort, but somewhere stimulating and different in terms of its intellectual engagement. And clearly, this is a new higher education building. Clearly, that egg box structure, however grand the atrium is and however wonderful the sponsor's name over the door might be, putting people in a room like this, this is factory learning. The one thing we know with absolute certainty is that we've got to get completely away from factory learning. I mean, look at this place. I mean, you can't imagine this bit. This is a place where the curriculum is delivered, where wisdom is received. It's a one-way street. It's just a pipe of knowledge onto those seats. And look, can you even see the electricity socket in the room? You know, hello, 21st century. Surely there'd be at least one socket per two students. And surely they'd be just at an arm's reach so that their laptops and PDAs and other devices would work. So, you know, absolutely. This is about building agile space, social space, playful space, space that's of an appropriate scale, space that is around collaboration and mutuality and sharing and usness, absolutely usness. And what it's not about is about factory learning. You know, the future of higher education is in our hands if we design it for the 21st century. If we don't, then I think we're looking at the, um, the British motorcycle industry. You know, we got it about right in the 1950s and pretty much it's going to be gone shortly. It's an interesting design task, uh, and I think a delightful one.